it is critical that you know what to do in the event of an H2S or SO2 gas release. To make it easy to remember, we've assigned each step an identifying letter. The first step you must take begins with A, the second with B, and so on. So let's take a look at what you need to do in the event of a gas release, or what we call the ABCs of initial response. A is for abandon. You must abandon the area immediately and evacuate to a safe area. Check wind conditions and move upwind from the release or crosswind away from an upwind release. Remember, H2S and SO2 are both heavier than air, so higher ground may also offer some relief. B is for broadcast. You must broadcast the alarm and follow your workplace procedures. For example, sound whistle, horn, or call by radio. Call for help. C is for count and consider. Conduct a head count and assess the situation for other hazards. D is for don. Don your respiratory protective equipment. Always put on your SCBA before attempting to rescue fallen co-workers. E is for exercise recovery operations. Only once you've donned your SCBA are you permitted to re-enter the exposed area to remove victims to safety. F is for first aid. Administer first aid and CPR if necessary. Call for emergency services and continue CPR until EMS arrives. Ensure the individual is kept warm and remove any contaminated clothing. Keep conscious individuals at rest. Be aware of possible accompanying injuries. For example, if the victim's eyes are red and painful, flush with large amounts of clean water for at least 15 minutes. Ensure the workers receive medical care as soon as possible. The worker must not be allowed to return to work or other activities after being knocked down by H2S. G is for guide. Guide EMS by providing directions and information to medical services. Even if the victim revives quickly, they still require medical attention because there remains a danger that fluid may collect in the lungs. Arrange a transport of the victim to medical aid and provide the necessary information to emergency medical services. Now that you know when it's safe to rescue a co-worker knocked down by H2S, we should cover how to remove the victim to safety. If you are alone and conducting the rescue yourself, you can simply grasp the victim's collar and drag them to safety. Use your wrists and forearms to support their head. Check your travel path periodically to ensure it's clear. The obvious difficulty with this technique is that it requires that you walk backwards. Another method if you are alone is to reach through under the victim's arms, crossing and grasping both arms while lifting the victim. Although this technique allows you to stand more upright, you are still walking backwards and need to be aware of your travel path. With two rescuers, loosen the neckline of the victim's coveralls and each grasp a side of the coveralls with one hand and lift and pull in unison. With this method, rescuers can fully stand and walk in the forward direction and the victim's head is supported by their clothing. Care must be taken to ensure the victim's clothing is loosened enough to prevent any pressure on the neck and throat. Another option with two rescuers is to have one rescuer at the victim's head and the other at the feet. Cross the victim's arms at their chest and overlap their legs. One rescuer lifts the victim by reaching through under the arms and lifting at the chest while supporting the victim's head against the rescuer's chest. The second rescuer lifts the victim at the lower legs and places both legs under one arm, leaving the other arm ready to open doors as they carry the victim to safety. So now that we know our ABCs of initial response, let's take a closer look at what to do in the event of an H2S release. When working in an H2S environment, a constant awareness of the wind direction is essential in or around the areas that could accidentally release toxic gas. The flags and windsocks will point in the opposite direction from which the wind is originating. For example, the windsock shown here is pointing to the east, so we know that the wind is blowing from the west. Wind direction is reported by the direction from which it originates. It sounds confusing, so let's look at a few examples. If the flags and windsocks are pointing south, then it would indicate a northerly wind. If they are pointing west, it would mean there is an easterly wind. Let's say you observe the flag on the main administration building and notice that it's pointing north. What wind direction would this indicate? We'll give you a few seconds to ponder this.
You'd be right if you answered southerly. What if the windsock in the laydown yard is pointing east? What wind direction would this indicate? It would be a westerly wind. This time you were listening to the radio and it reports that the wind is westerly. From which direction is the wind blowing? In this case, it would be blowing from the west. Knowing the wind direction and how it is reported could be essential in any accidental gas release situation. Obviously, the wind direction is not limited to the four directions we talked about previously, but you should now have a good understanding of how it is reported. If the area flags are pointing southwest, then this would indicate a northeasterly wind, and so on. But why is all this talk about the wind so important? Well, if there is a gas release, you need to get away from or abandon the area as quickly and safely as possible. You have to ensure that you are not running into the path of the toxic gas. Your goal is to get upwind of the gas, and you can't do that if you don't know which way the wind is blowing the gas. Keep in mind, though, that H2S is heavier than air, so higher ground is also better. When the alarm sounds, check the windsock, area flags, or trees to determine the direction of the wind. In this example, the windsock is pointing south, so you know it's a northerly wind which will be blowing the gas to the south. The gas release is to the south of your position, so to head upwind means you head north. If you are located upwind from a gas release, then continue to move upwind away from the release area. Let's look at the example again but this time you are in a different location when the alarm sounds. From this position, the release is upwind of you. If you were to head upwind now, you would be walking directly into the toxic gas. Heading downwind is also not an option, since the gas will be blowing directly into your path if you do. The best option, therefore, is to initially head crosswind. In this scenario, heading west appears to be the best option. Your goal should be to get upwind of the release, but if you are located downwind, you will need to initially head crosswind away from the release area, then head north. If you are located upwind from a gas release, then continue to move upwind away from the release area. Never move downwind of a gas release. Here is an aerial view of a gas release situation. Imagine yourself standing in position one. You are wearing safety glasses, a hard hat and safety boots. The gas alarm just started flashing. In which direction should you head to safely abandon the area? If you said north, you were right. What if you were standing in position two? In which direction would you need to head to safely abandon the area now? If you said west, you were right. This time you are standing in position one when the alarm starts to sound. You know your coworker is lying on the ground in position two. What would you do? Remember, you are not wearing respiratory protective equipment. So if you attempt to rescue your coworker, you will also be knocked down. You must abandon the area immediately before attempting any rescue. The alarm is broadcasting and you've counted one worker knocked down. Consider, can you safely re-enter? You don your air pack and exercise recovery by getting to your coworker and dragging or carrying him or her to safety. Then you administer first aid and guide emergency services. Every worksite will be different. Get to know the muster stations. If it's an H2S environment, get to know the location of the alarms. Locate the wind socks. Get to know the landscape. Ensure you have all of the PPE necessary. You may need personal gas detectors. 
If so, ensure you know how to operate them. Make sure you know the location of emergency equipment and air packs. Ensure you have the training needed to don and wear the equipment. When you are dealing with H2S, there are no do-overs. Resist running in to save a co-worker that's just been knocked down by H2S until after you've donned your RPE. If it got them, it will get you too. This course covers the basics, but to become competent, you need practical experience. Never work in known H2S environments without familiarization training on respiratory protection equipment. Become proficient donning the equipment before your life or your body's life hangs on your ability to get it on in a hurry. Remember your ABCs and don't take chances with your health and safety. Make sure you know the safe work procedures and be diligent in following them. Your family is counting on you to make it home safely at the end of every day.